The Witcher 3 is an amazing game that's full of beautiful landscapes and intriguing stories. I have been playing it a lot, on and off since it came out in 2015. Since then it has come out 2 DLCs and a lot of updates. With the new Witcher series coming out on Netflix and more players picking up the game for the first time, I thought why not play through the game once more and make a 2020 beginners tutorial. One of my first recommendations are to stick to the roads until you get comfortable with the combat in the game, especially when to dodge, parry and use different signs. When you are in combat you have three different ways to avoid getting hit in the Witcher, not counting running away of course. You have parry and dodge. Parry is the same button as the Witcher sense, which is LT on the Xbox and L2 on the Playstation I believe. This only works when in combat. Parry can be used against most attacks from humanoids, but not heavy attacks. I also believe it's not possible to parry animals, I'm at least not any good at it, so against them I just use dodge and quen. The quen sign are the third thing and gives you a magical shield that will defend you against the first attack that your enemy hits on you, unless you can block it or counterattack. Counterattacking are something you can do if you press the parry button at the right time before the enemy hits you. So what I usually do depending on if I have to use an other sign as well when fighting an enemy are that I pop the Quen sign when starting a fight, then parry or dodge the most that I can depending on the attacks that are thrown at me. Magical attacks are the worst to be honest. And then I just counter attack and hit the enemy when I see an opening and keep the quen up at all times and recast it if I get hit. The best story are one of your best friends in the game. Use it to give you information about every monster or beast after you have encountered it once. This will be very useful when finding weaknesses and such that the beast or monster have. This will make it easy for you to use the right oils, signs, bombs and such on your enemy. Oils are applied to your steel or silver sword. The steel sword are used mostly for humanoids and beasts, and the silver sword are used against monsters and magical creatures. Gerald sometimes also hints at what beast or monster you are most likely up against if it's not obvious from the start, and can then also talk about what he should do when he finds it. So listen to what he says when he's looking for clues in the area where the beast or monster might be. Create bombs and potions and such as soon as you unlock them and have the materials. You will get a limited amount of potions and bombs, but the amount will restack when you meditate. This makes it necessary to only craft them once. Meditation can be done almost everywhere, both inside and outside of caves. You will find nests some places in the world and they can only be destroyed with bombs. If you don't destroy them, the mobs will just keep coming. Try to complete as much as you can in White Orchard when you start the game. Investigate every question mark. A few might be a high level, but most should be pretty safe when you learn the combat. Do all the notice board quests, they will help you level fast and get you faster into the gameplay. The story is also a nice bonus. After all, this is a game where the story plays a very big role. Some of the question marks that are on the map all around the world can be places of power. This is a magical stone that will give you one ability point. It's very important to try and find them at least early in the game since it will make you stronger, faster. Some of these places of power can be a little hidden in bushes and such, but when you get close, Gerald will say something like This looks like a place of power. And then it's just to look around the area until you find it. 
The NPCs are spread all around the world, both inside of towns, cities and in the wilderness. So look for explanation marks all around the world. They will show you where you can get quests from NPCs. The three things that I recommend that you upgrade first are the muscle memory since this increases the fast attack with 5% damage and 1 adrenaline point for each point that you spend in it. The second thing I would recommend are the quensine with exploding shield. This pushes the enemy back and deals damage when it breaks with a chance of knockdown. The third thing I recommend at the start of the game that you upgrade are Delusion from Axie Sign, since this can help you a lot in the dialogues with the NPCs in the game. You also have mutation slots, here I recommend that you use at least some that gives you utility, since this will increase your health. Mutages comes with different colors, so does the other slots that you have. If the mutage and the other slot upgrade have the same color, the mutage will increase the strength of that upgrade's power. On level 6 I recommend that you spend a point in survival instinct under the general tab, since this will increase the maximum vitality with 500. Other than this, you should pretty much do as you feel like and what suits you best depending on your playstyle. The Witcher 3 is a game where you can loot almost anything, so that's absolutely what you should do. As long as it won't get you in any big trouble with some high level guards and such. If you are not sure if there are items nearby that you can loot, use your Witcher sense. At some point they changed the autosave settings in an update. By default when it was released it was set to 10 minutes. This were a problem since a lot of people didn't remember to save before they went out to battle and such. So many times they could lose up to 10 minutes uh, of gameplay. Now this is changed so you can go into settings and you can change it down to one minute. So find what suits you best but I recommend that you save before going into battle exploring places or enter a quest zone just to be safe. But remember if a battle has already started you can't save so either try your luck or run out of battle so you can save first. Upgrading your horse are something you can do in the game, or rather the equipment on the horse. You can get 4 different upgrades for your horse. First of all we have the trophy that you can get from different type of large monsters, like a head, a claw or something like that. This will then increase some of the stats or make you stronger or better in a lot of different ways. Secondly, we have the blinders. They will increase the horse fear level so it won't be spooked as fast. Thirdly, there are the saddle bags. They will increase your inventory weight. Fourth are the saddle itself. This will increase the stamina of the horse so you can run fast longer. Something that will be very useful in the game's many horse races. And extra tips when it comes to horse races are that they are a very good way of getting new upgrades for your horse, depending on how much you bet you can get a good amount of money out of it as well. Good inventory management are pretty important in the game. A lot of the items that you find may weigh a lot, but be pretty useless in their current form, so I recommend that you should go to an armorer and dismantle items that you find around the world that you don't need. This will then give you materials that you can use to upgrade or craft new gear that might be more useful to you. Crafting gear and weapons must be done at an armorsmith or a weaponsmith. At some point you will need to sell items but take a close look at what you need for crafting different stuff like gear potions, oils and so on. 
Another tip that might be useful is if you see items that weigh a lot but you might need later. See if you can sell some of them but keep about 10 of each item. So that way you reduce the weight but keep some of the materials. So to sum up you should stay on the road at the start until you feel ready and that you master the combat. Meditate to restack your potions, bombs and such and save rather one time too many than one too little. Explore the question marks and check notice boards for quests. Use the bestry before fighting beasts or monsters. And learn when to dodge, parry or using the quen sign in fights. Inventory management to keep your inventory weight down and get most of the materials and money you can. A last tip about gear are that if you have the DLCs installed then there will be a vendor in White Orchard named Bram that will sell you some nice gear. The gear are a bit expensive but could be a nice upgrade if you can afford it. This is all that I can think about that could be useful in the start of the game. I hope you have enjoyed this and please give a like, leave a comment or press the subscribe or notification bell if you want to see the next time I upload a video. This has been Thalgor, signing out.